Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fences channel on YouTube. I know, being away for a year, actually more than that, is not that fancy, but trust me, I've been doing quite a lot, and maybe I'll show you. I don't know, subscribe to the channel, and if I post anything, you guys are going to definitely know. Um, so, today we're going to be talking about, as I said in the last video, containerized apps. I'm going to put a Flask app into a container, a Docker container. Now, why would you like to do a Docker container, right? Uh, imagine this, you have this big, massive machine and you have to put a lot of services running on it. Maybe there are hundreds of Flask apps. How do you manage all of that? Well, usually in, in the old days, you would have VMs, right? So you would share that bare metals with a bunch of VMs that are in their own sandboxes, but then you have to resize those VMs depending on how much you need it. Containers sit above the operational system, so you're not dividing into many machines, essentially, but you divide in sandbox process, processes that share the main kernel of the operational system. Long story short, it is a sandbox process that runs inside of your VM, or sorry, your machine, in a way that, they, that you can just control the processes a lot better. So it is more secure if you do it so it is secure, right? If you only expose what you need and access what you need from the operational system, and it is much easier to scale because now you have a repeatable way to package something that always runs in a container environment. In this case right now, we're gonna create a Docker image using the Docker, uh, the Docker file notation, which is created by the Docker company. So Docker files, Docker company. There are different flavors of it, um, Podman, Solaris have been doing containers or sandbox environments for quite a while. So, don't, so let's think about the, the main idea behind it. But today we're going to be talking about Docker. Docker, the company, has their Docker Hub where you can pull the images that are not private really to you specifically, although you can publish private images. But they also have public versions like Python one here. And there we go. So first, we need to create our Python image, and then we're going to put it inside of this container image. And I'm going to show you how. First, we're going to create a new project for Python. Before, I used to do a setup tools uh, setup of, of the project. For now, I'm going to use Poetry. It is just a new way of defining a project, but it's very similar in how it works. So I can just initialize it. So this is going to be my Python Flask app version. Sorry, that previous project is nuked. It's been quite a while, so I don't even remember. Um, Flask app. And it doesn't really matter, right? All we need is just an app that we can just iterate on. And now we're just going to define the dependency. We need Flask. And that's the first one. And that's fine for now. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Good. All right, good. So it just defines now the project that we can just install and the dependencies and all that. Very similar to what we did before. We're also gonna create a new app.py file, which is our Flask app. And we're gonna from Flask, import Flask, Flask, and then Flask app, and then our root route. Root route, whoop, yeah, there we go, good. So now, if, you, if everything was installed properly, now we can do pull the tree, run, flask run, which is just gonna use the virtual environment of, of, of that pull the tree environment. So pull the tree just creates a virtual environment for you, so it's segregated in, in your operational system, and then it just opens up the process. Now, good, it is listening on port 5000, so we, if we go to code.fancyway.ca, now this is a, hosted environment of coding that is uh, in running in my cluster, my personal Kubernetes cluster. I'm gonna put a picture of it somewhere. And if you wanna know, hear more about it, just let me know down in the comments and I'm definitely gonna show you. But later, but this is more for later when I talk about Kubernetes. But anyways, if you go here, code fence, you'll say on port 5000, hello world runs. And if you want to just change it here, let's say hello world gi, and let's just switch it up here a little. It's just a, a flask cap, right? So there we go, it just updates. Good, all right, so this is the app. Now, we need to prepackage that in a container image that has Python. And look how amazing that is. This Python community, this Python official image has a bunch of tags, just like a, a Git repo, that are defined with different flavors of it, right? 
So those can be based on Debian, Alpine, and a multitude of, you know, flavors of operational system layers that makes it be different from one another. Don't have to worry about that. Just think about it as, you know, when you install a different flavor of Linux, it has some different things that have of their runtime. For now, I'm going to just choose Alpine on Python 3.11 because, let me show you, if you look at the difference between Bullseye and Alpine, before Bullseye is already quite, you know, small in size, it's only 45 megabytes, but if you look at Alpine, it's like 17 megabytes with Python, pip, everything that we need installed. So that's pretty amazing. So let's do that. So what I want is Python 3.11 with Alpine. So let me just copy this guy over here. And what I'll do, I'll just create a new Docker file where I'm going to define that I'm going to start from Python. And since we're using Docker and Docker by default looks for their images in their Docker hub, I just need to call it Python. Otherwise, I'll have to put the full URI of my private um, of my uh, base layer, right, of my image. So from Python. And now if we look at it into Docker and then we build a new Flask app, oops, with a new tag of 000, hello, there we go. So it just pulls that image, those 17 megabytes, and it creates an image with that layer, nothing else, right? But I just wanna show you if we run and then we attach ourselves to that Flask 000, into the shell environment, I have now a Python of version 3.11 and pip also installed. Great, isn't it? Nice. And now if you do a pip freeze, you're gonna see that it's pretty much empty, right? So it is just a blank canvas in which we can do whatever we want. Now, what we can do is create a new folder. So work dear say it's kind of like Checks if, if the folder exists. If it doesn't, just creates the folder for you and changes it to it. So it does CD to that. And then we can copy. How do we install with pip something that Poetry did, right? Because that's not the same. We need that requirements.txt file. So I'm just going to use Poetry to export the requirements.txt. And then it just creates that requirements file here. I need to remove those guys because uh, that is not a requirements txt file. It just ensures that it's locked into the version that I need this to run upon because that's what I did locally, right? I run this project with this version. And now I, what I can do in Docker is I can copy that requirements.txt file to this app folder. And I can run pip install requirements txt. Now what that's gonna do is copy, and let me just also copy the um, app.py, sorry, app.py into the app folder as well. And now let's build that again. So let's do docker build and then version one. Now it's gonna use the cached version of it. This is amazing, right? It caches everything for us. So we don't have to be pulling everything all at the same time or anything like that. It just does hashes of every layer of everything that you do from this base image. So whenever we do something else, let's say we just run something here, right? Uh, let's say pip install click. Let's say if we want to install click here, we can just build that again. So let's do like a task image. We're not gonna use that. But as you can see, everything else is cached. It is pretty amazing how much faster everything just builds because you already have the version that you need. All right, anyways, so we're not gonna use that guy. We don't need click. Click is actually installed with Flask, which is part of the requirements.txt. So now what we do now, so let's build that 002. Now we have the 002 image, so Docker run. So let's go to the 002 image and look into what we have. We are now in the app folder, like we did say in the beginning. And if you look at it, we have the app.py. And because we installed the requirements, we have Flask here as well. So let's try to run it, so, shall we? So Flask run. You see it runs on port 5000, but now wait, this is running in the container. It's not running in my local host. Is that gonna still work? Let's check that out. So let's go back to port 5000. It doesn't. What is happening here? So what is happening right now is two things. First, 
I'm not port forwarding from the container. The container is isolated from my localhost. So right now it is exposed on port 5000 in the container, but the container, but the localhost where this runs is not exposing that port. So what do we have to do? First, we go and we come back and then we run Flask and then we tell it to forward all the requests of the local host on port 5000 into port 5000 of this Flask app. And now if we do a Flask, and as you can see, it already forwarded. So my machine saw that I'm forwarding that port. And now I can just do Flask run and it now goes and forwards it. Is it going to work? Now, the second thing that I was going to tell you is that no, it is not because this is only listening to localhost. But now we're hopping between the first operational system or the localhost, the base layer of that operational system, going to the container, which is a different machine, essentially. We need to tell it to listen on the on every host. So bind it everywhere. So just listen to whatever, right? And now we actually get it there. So here, this is what we have. This is, we have a prepackaged version that we can publish and everybody's going to get it the same way. It doesn't matter because regardless of their local version of Python, the local version of their pip packages or anything, this packaged image that I just created, and I can check that out right here, right? So we, let's exit this container. Let's see Docker images list, image list. We're going to see that we built that image of 52 megabytes, sorry, 68 megabytes that has our Python uh, or Flask app. So with 68 megabytes, we can distribute this app and consistently recreate that everywhere as much as we would need. But wait, I have to still run the app from within, right? You saw it, you have to type Flask. So what we do, we just do an entry point or a CMD. I can go into details, just let me know in the comments. But I just tell it, hey, how do we want to run this container by default? So we just say it's Flask run host 0000. And now when we run it again, so let's first build and it's going to be very fast because everything's cached and then make the new Docker run port 5000. I'm not going to pass the SH. I'm just going to let it just run, right? And I just run version three. Look what happened. It already attached itself to that container running a port 5000 and it just works. It's still working. Now, what is even greater than this, I can detach myself and run this on port 5000 and it still runs. And I can check here with Dr. PS that it is in fact running. And here it is on port 5000 listening to it. And we can run multiple copies of it, clones essentially, that is run running on port 5001. Well, port 5000 still works. Port 5001 also works because they can all run in parallel. So now you can have all of your apps listening to the same port in their own little sandboxed environment and then exposed into a, into a host into different ports. So you can essentially balance that better. And this is now a application and imagine this a stateless application that you can just have multiple copies running and it can distribute your load throughout all of these apps. Isn't it amazing? That's exactly why I wanted to show you. So the next step here now, it is I'm going to publish this app and I'm going to put it to run in an environment that it's going to just use the full power of containers. A hint, that's Kubernetes, my friends. And if you know me in real life, you know that I'm all about it. <laughs> so thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.